ABC University of the Air, a public service of the National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated stations, presents another chapter in the historical series, We Came This Way. Listen at the close of this program for details about the booklet NBC has prepared to supplement and aid in your enjoyment of this program. And now we present the story of Joseph Mazzini, another step toward liberalism. We came this way. have at last shaken off the yoke of their oppressors. All Naples gathers in the streets to cheer its leaders, to pay homage to the saviors of Italy, to the men who have given her people union and freedom. They say Victor Emmanuel himself is in the procession. So I heard. And of course, Garibaldi and Cavour. I tell you, friend, this is a great day for Italy. Uh, careful, careful. Make room for this old man and let him through. Oh, sorry, senor. There. Can you see the street now? Yeah. Thank you, my son. Yes, I can see now. And who is that old man in the long black gown? He looks familiar, does he not? I have seen him somewhere. Look, the old fellow. Huh, he seems faint. Are you all right, senor? You must be careful. You might get hurt in the crowd. Uh, no, my son. I can't be hurt now. Senor, why are you here? Oh, forgive me, but, but this celebration isn't for such as you. This is for the new Italy. No, son. This celebration isn't for me. Perhaps you're right. I shouldn't have come. What have I to do with the new Italy? What has the new Italy to do with me? Look! The royal carriage! Look! The royal carriage! See! There is Garibaldi! Yes, a forgotten man stood on the outskirts of the crowd that day in Naples, the cheers of hope and triumph ringing in his ears. And those about him, though they were kind, though his appearance stirred some chord of memory, knew him not. But what about that remark, that too easy, too glib remark, that the new Italy was no part of him? Let us look back. Let us turn back the calendar 40 years in the life of this man, to the time of his youth to a certain day in Genoa when a chance meeting determined the course of the young Martini's life. He sits in a small cafe with a fellow student. What's that white cloth you carry, soldier? For the Patriots of Italy, Signor. For the Carbonari. We need funds, ammunition. Our ranks are broken, Signor Martini. But why do you fight, soldier? Under whose command and for what cause? We fight for freedom for Italians. We fight the enemies of freedom. You mean Austria? All of our oppressors, sir. We fight to drive Austria from the north and France from the south. But how about the independent rulers in Tuscany, Modena, Parma? All are to be overthrown. We will unite the provinces and form one country where free men shall rule themselves, as they do in America. And uh, are there many like you, soldier? Are there many who fight for freedom? In every province, senor. In every hidden room where arms are stored. In every basement where secret meetings are held, men are working for Italy's liberation. And we shall never stop fighting for Italia. Martini's next letter to his mother brought her news of the encounter. Something in the soldier's glance, something in the lingering cadence of the word Italia smote me. A sense of the wrongs of Italy. A feeling that to struggle against these wrongs is a duty. A presentiment that in that struggle I must play my part. All these flashed upon me. The remembrance of these refugees pursued me wherever I went by day and mingled with my dreams by night. I could have given I know not what to follow them. I began collecting names and facts and studied as best I could the records of a heroic struggle. I started the work which I know now I must finish. And so, I now find myself here, in this place. Prisoner 
492? You are 492, are you not? Yes, you are. I am 492. There. Oh, uh, Signor Mazzini, I represent the Polizia de Savona. I bring official orders. Hey, for... Then tell me, Signor, why am I a prisoner here at Savona? What is the charge? The charge, Signor Mazzini. Surely you know what your crime has been. Sedition, plotting to overthrow the monarchy, membership in the secret society known as Carbonari. You call it a crime to fight injustice? A wish to help one's people? But, Signor Mazzini, I bring you an You offer. may imprison us. You may drive us underground, but still we will fight for freedom and for Italy. But, Signor, I have here orders to grant you your freedom. Freedom? You mean I'm to be released? On one condition. Yes? That you give up this, this agitation, that you forswear your allegiance to the Carbonari and all revolutionary groups. And if I refuse? Exile. You will leave the country. Leave? Leave Italy? Yes, Signor Mazzini. Well, thank you, Signor. I have made my decision. I shall do the only possible thing. And you choose? Exile. Banished from his homeland, the young Mazzini crossed the border to France, ever the haven of the refugees. Here in the city of Marseille were his friends and fellow workers. And here in the city of Marseille was Giudita Sodolfo, the beautiful Italian girl who somehow seemed to understand the dream in one's heart. <laughs> young Italy, it's a lovely name, Giuseppe. Young Italy. It came to me in the prison at Savona, Giudita. The hope of organizing the youth of Italy. But I believe it's only the young who dream of a better world. Only the young who dare fight for it. See, here I have all the plans. Giuseppe, all these lists. Pictures, maps, even the kinds of ammunition. How? Well, there was plenty of time to work in prison, Judita. Oh, my poor Giuseppe. But that's all over, my dearest. You're much too thin. I'm going to bake big, rich puddings for you. Judita. Oh, here, let me put this woolen scarf around you again. <laughs> There. How many times must I tell you? Judita, I didn't know it then. But there was one thing I needed more than anything else. One thing I needed to give me strength to carry on the fight. And that was? You, Judita. Giuseppe. I love you, Judita. I need you beside me always. If you are there, nothing can hurt us. With your hand to guide me, I cannot fail. I'll never leave you, Giuseppe. We'll work together, darling. I can write letters for you and keep your books and carry messages back into Italy where you can't go. My heart is so full, Judita. If I could only tell you. You've brought me light where there was darkness. You've brought me peace where there was pain. Giuseppe, I do believe you're a poet as well as a political dreamer. Come now, let's get to work. We'll work for two things, my dearest. For Italy and for us. Bravo, Giuseppe. For Italy and... and for us. <laughs> the pamphlet, sir. They're already coming off the press. Good. Let's see. Members, all loyal men and women under 40. Purpose, to overthrow the eight monarchies of Italy and create a single united republic of the Italian people. Excellent. Yes, sir. The heading looks very handsome, sir, in black type. Young Italy. Goodness, that's the last of the sausage cage. Uh, how many did we put in, Judy? Uh, 250 under the false bottom of each cage, Giuseppe. Now, uh, the flower bag? Yes. <coughs> Back down into the flower, Judy. <laughs> Push the pamphlet in. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of flower for the people in Rome and Pisa. Perhaps they should name it Young Italy. <laughs> Good day, Monsieur Mazzini. Back again? Yes. Is this signet ring, monsieur. Ah, oui. It is very beautiful. It was my mother's. One thousand francs, monsieur? Oh, you're very generous. That is because we, too, dream of liberty, monsieur. We wish to help your, how do you call it, young Italy? Years of planning, organizing, addressing meetings, smuggling ammunition, 
and at last the time was ripe. Young Italy was ready to strike the first blow. Uprisings were hatching all over Italy. Leaders had been chosen. Studita, tomorrow is the day. Tomorrow, General Romarino will lead us on our march to Savoy. Good evening, General Romarino. Now, Signorina, I am enchanted. I'm always amazed by your beauty. Is everything ready for tomorrow, General? You have gone over the plan of attack for the city? Do not be concerned, Signorina. Everything is planned. Tomorrow. Think of it, Judito. All that we've planned for years will come true. Rebellions throughout Italy. We will take them by surprise. Well, that is tomorrow. Tonight, Signorina, let me drink to your health. To your beauty. If you please, General, I should like the accounting you promised. How have you used the funds Signor Mazzini turned over to you? The uh, funds? Why, for supplies, uniforms, ammunition. But you have ammunition. We supplied you from our stores. But you would not understand, Signorina. It is not a woman's business equipping an army. Well, the General has spent all of the money, Judita. The costs were greater than he expected. He's explained to me. You understand, General. We must take Savoy tomorrow. The liberation of all Italy depends on this. We can trust you. But of course, Signorina. Here, let me fill your glasses. We will drink to Italy, to Savoy. A fine idea. Only think, Judita. Tomorrow night we may drink this wine in Italy. An Italy that we have freed. Here you are, Signorina. Mazzini. To Italy. To Savoy. Yes, Judita. God grant you may be right, Giuseppe. To Italy. To Savoy. <laughs> to march into our beloved country. General Romarino will lead us. Whoa! Beyond the border, your countrymen are now fighting or preparing to fight the holy fight of independence, of freedom, of liberty. Whoa! Tonight, all of Italy will be in our hands. God be with you and bless Italy. of a united Italy in their hearts, young Italy was on the march. Mile after mile, over the hills, through the valleys and lanes of southern France. It was late in the afternoon and still they marched. A strange foreboding filled Martini's heart. Where were the gates of Savoy? Why had they not been stopped? On and on, as General Romarino's orders rang out sharply, Come right! Forward! March! Evening, darkness, and still no counterattack. Ranks were breaking. Men began to tire and fall. General Ramarino! Ramarino! What is this? Where are we? We have been tricked, General Ramarino. <laughs> oh, Senor Martini, you are simple, no? We are back at the gates of Marseille. You are under arrest, Senor Martini. Turn down! Here is the prisoner. No, no, no! We will fight! In Italy! <laughs> In Italy! Your puny rebellions have been put down everywhere, senor. I have kept the authorities informed of your plans. <laughs> Where is your free Italy now, senor Martini? <laughs> the prisoner, Giuseppe Mazzini, is hereby banished from France under pain of death by order of His Majesty... Napoleon the Third. Banished from France, his money gone, his followers captured or scattered, Mazzini fled to England. His years of working, scheming, dreaming had ended in ignominious failure. And yet, in Italian breath everywhere, hearts had stirred with new hope. The seed had been sown. Young Italy was not to die or be suppressed. Encouraged by friends, Thomas Carlyle, Jane Welch, William Wordsworth, and lovers of liberty throughout England, Mazzini kept on working. By 1848, the breath of freedom was again sweeping across Europe. In every country, young patriots were fighting, winning, pushing back the heavy hand of tyranny and oppression. Disguised as a peasant, Mazzini returned to Italy to lead the fight in the northern provinces against Austria. 
to meet with Judita in Milan, where even now, from a hotel room, sounds of victory from the streets below could be heard. Listen, Judita, there it is, the voice of New Italy. Milan is all but ours. In every street, in every house, they fight as we have planned. But young Italy can't do it alone, Giuseppe. The Austrians are too strong. They'll send reinforcements. We have the will, Judita. We can fight with clubs, with knives, with our bare hands, if necessary. Giuseppe, my darling, my darling, be practical. Go to King Charles, enlist the support of Sardinia. King Charles? Never. But he is a good king, Giuseppe. He too hates Austria. No, Judita. Giuseppe, look. Look from the window. The people are falling back. The Austrian grenadiers are breaking through the barricades. Giuseppe, hurry while there's still time. King Charles will send fresh troops. You promised to support. I cannot, Judita. Giuseppe. Signor, signorina, you must flee. Milan has fallen. The Austrians are returning. Hurry, signor, you mustn't be found here. But the city was ours. We had driven them back. King Charles has surrendered in the north, sir. It is too late, then, Giuseppe. Just as I said it would be. He has abdicated his throne. The Austrian troops are pouring in. But hurry, Signor Marcini. Hurry, you must leave the country. Come, Judita. We will leave the country. But without freedom, one's country is only one's prison. Once again, with the fruits of victory in Italy's grasp, with liberation in sight, defeat. Once again, for Giuseppe Mazzini, exile. Exile, but not disgrace. Exile, but not oblivion. For now the spirit of liberty had become a living, breathing thing in a land of death. New fires sprang up from the ashes of defeat. The new king, Victor Emmanuel, continued the fight his father had forsaken. A young Count de Cavour, his prime minister, raised armies to drive Austria from the north. And in the south, a fiery youth named Garibaldi fought with a handful of men to drive the French out of Rome and Naples. It was April in England, and April in his heart, the day that Mazzini received the glad tidings. Judita, Judita, the dispatches have come. Rome has been declared a republic. Giuseppe, at last, Rome a republic. And they want me, Judita. They want me for the new government, to be one of the three governors. A triumvir. Giuseppe, what things you can do in such a position. With part of Italy free, you can help to free the rest. A republic throughout Italy, Judita. But why must it be a republic, Giuseppe? I want no part of monarchy, Judita, however liberal. Let Cavour and Garibaldi do what they will. I shall not compromise. Giuseppe, you're a dreamer and idealist. You want the impossible. You and your kind are always hurt. No, I can't see it, Giuseppe, holding out for a republic. But you believe in me, Judita. I believe in you, Giuseppe. Even when you're wrong. Because I love you. Have you heard? The new Triumvir Mazzini has arrived in Rome. The people are parading in the streets in his honor. The new Triumvir has lifted the tax on grains and salt. We'll have bread again. The Triumvir Mazzini has established a free press. We may print whatever we please. Bad news. Our Roman Republic has fallen. The Triumvir Mazzini has been captured by French officials. The Triumvir Mazzini has escaped and fled from Italy. They say there's a sentence of death on his head. The people are mourning in the streets in his honor. During his brief term as Triumvir of Rome, Mazzini had instituted a true government of the people, had established legislative reforms beyond the peasants' wildest dreams. The Republic of Rome was beaten, but beaten as a song is beaten, for the echoes of its music sounded throughout Italy, throughout Europe. New forces were released, and Cavour and Garibaldi were their expression. Wearied in spirit, unaware that the tide had now passed him by, Mazzini took refuge in Switzerland, there to live down one more defeat, to pick up the broken pieces, to turn again to Judita for solace and strength. We can work here in Zurich. 
Judy, to perform another underground as we did at Marseille. No, Giuseppe. It would be of no use. But why, Judita? We cannot stop now. The time is ripe. Italy is all but ours. The time is ripe. But not for you, Giuseppe. But Judita... Oh, Giuseppe, can't you forget all this? You have given everything to Italy, Giuseppe. I've waited all these years. And now we could marry and go away. Oh, but later, Judita, when Italy... It's always been later, Giuseppe. When Italy no longer needs you. But this is now, Giuseppe, and believe me... Italy no longer needs you. Judita, you can say that. You who've always believed in me. I have believed in you, Giuseppe. Even when everything seemed hopeless and lost. Even when I knew you were blind. Blind, Judita. You have dreamed only of a republic for Italy, Giuseppe. I still dream of a republic. But it cannot be. Don't you see, Giuseppe? Not in our lifetime. A republic is an ideal... But we must compromise with our ideals. I refuse to compromise. Cavour has compromised. Garibaldi has compromised. They are the new leaders of Italy. You will continue fighting your way. And you'll be beaten again. Beaten. Forgotten. I will go on fighting, Judita. Until monarchy is overthrown and Italy is a republic. I must be true to myself, Judita. I love my country. More than you love me. But you're part of me, Judita. That's not the point. I can't go on without you. Marry me now and we'll go on fighting together. No, Giuseppe, no. It's too late. I have loved you. I still love you, but I give you your choice. You've served Italy well, but you've lost, Giuseppe. Leave her now to our new leaders. Give up this senseless fight. And I will marry you. And if I... I cannot promise that. You must go on. Alone. I see. I must choose between the woman I love above all earthly things and the country I love above myself. Yes, Giuseppe. Then... Then it must be Italy, Giudita. I have no other choice. Giuseppe Mazzini did go on fighting, alone, for the unification of his people. He never recognized the Savoy monarchy as anything but a formal exterior unity. Once again, he attempted an uprising in Sardinia, but it was stopped before it started. And once again, he whose life had been made up of failures, defeats, and barren choices was to be offered a choice. Pardon to be granted and said Joseph Mazzini to be offered general amnesty of death sentence now imposed upon him. Amnesty? Upon what conditions, sir? With the provision that he swear allegiance to the king of Sardinia and renounce all association with movements to establish an Italian republic. Renounce all association with movements to establish an Italian republic? Yes, signor. Your answer, signor Mazzini? You may tell your leaders and your king that I refuse, that I am unable to accept an offer of oblivion and pardon for having loved Italy above all else. And so, ten years later, a sad, white-haired man was to stand with jubilant crowds in the streets of Naples watched the triumphal procession pass him by. And a man standing next to him in the crowd that lined the street was to say to him, Why are you here, signor? Forgive me, but this celebration isn't for such as you. This is for the new Italy. No, son. This celebration isn't for me. Perhaps you're right. I shouldn't have come. What have I to do with the new Italy? What has the new Italy to do with me. Giuseppe Martini died on his way to Pisa in 1872. 
died in a last desperate attempt to establish a republic, a people that lay of which he had dreamed. It has been said that Italian unity was won through the sword of Garibaldi, the statesmanship of Cavour, and the spirit of Mazzini. This was the spirit, this the dream of freedom that lived on through the dark days of fascist rule, through the days of Nazi terror. This is the spirit that still moves in the hearts of fighting Italians today. Italians in whose ears the, still ring the words of Giuseppe Mazzini. I love freedom. Perhaps I love it better than my own country. Without freedom, one's country is only one's prison. The NBC University of the Air has brought you Chapter 19 of the new historical series, We Came This Way. In the days that lie ahead, every American needs to know the facts about our struggle for a democratic way of life. To give you more information about the events dramatized in this series, and to suggest further reading for you, NBC has prepared a handbook, especially written for the current series. We shall be very happy to send this interesting book to you on request. Send 25 cents to cover the cost of printing and mailing to We Came This Way, Post Office 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. That's a little complicated, so I'll repeat it again. Send to We Came This Way, Post Office 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. <laughs> Tonight's program was under the direction of Albert Cruz. Original music was composed by Dr. Roy Shield and conducted by Mr. Joseph Galicchio. In tonight's cast, you heard Mr. Clifton Utley as narrator, Mr. Wilms Herbert as Mazzini, Miss Betty Lou Gerson as Judita, and Mr. Michael Romano as Ramarino. Others in the cast were Mr. Sidney Elstrom, Mr. Maurice Copeland, and Mr. Sidney Breeze. Be sure to listen next week at this same time for the story of Carl Schurz on... We came this way.